kingdom promotion. Kingdom, no, kingdom, uh, kingdom guarantee to divine promotion. Kingdom guarantee to divine promotion. So I'm reading my text or quoting my text from Psalm 46, verse 10. The Bible says, Be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Then he goes on to say, I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted among the heathen. Then it says, I will be exalted in the earth. Let me call it again. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. So, Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. As we have come, we pray that your word come forth with power. Today, that you prove that you are God. And so, exalt yourself among us. Do what human beings cannot do. Father, let there be no doubt that you are the God of heaven and earth, of the creator of everything. And today, we are here to experience, not to hear your word, to experience the word. To be ushered into the tangible manifestation. And so I pray and I ask you, do only what God can do. Heal the sick, cast out devils. Do as they are hearing me. Everything under your creation must be aligned and work for them. Before we are done, I want to hear and see testimonies of glorious acts beyond our wildest stream. May your name be praised. May your name be glorified. And I thank you, O Lord. I thank you. In Jesus' marvelous name. Amen. I really believe the kind of Christianity that we display in the church is an error and does not correctly display or explain the God that we serve. And when you begin to look at people that really walked with God and experienced a dimension of the supernatural, and I'm not talking about some of the few things we experience or we call miracles. I'm talking about a dimension of divine demonstration that leaves no doubt that God has shown up. One of these examples is when there was a contention among the Israelites whether God is God or Baal was God. And so Elijah gathered the prophets of Baal, 400 of them, and he was alone. And he threw a challenge to them. He threw a garden to them and said to them, "We are going to alter. We are going to order a uh, altar, uh, erect an altar, and put a sacrifice on it. And we are going to see the person who can call fire from heaven to consume the offering. Let that person's God be God." And so that opinion was accepted by the whole citizens of Israel. So the and and so the prophets of Baal established, erected their altar and put animals on it. And then they begin to go through their gymnastic of rituals and they begin to call upon Baal and they dance, they cut themselves. I mean, the whole day they tried, nothing happened. When they got to the time of Elijah, after he had erected his altar, God spoke to him to pour water on it. Pour water on the wood. He did, and God said, do it much more. So he literally wetted the altar that needs to be set on fire. He made it impossible, difficult, and he made it so that nobody would doubt whether really God can consume incompatible items. 
And so after he had done all these things and said that uh, erected the altar and then he had literally poured water on it, not kerosene, not but water. And then he said to God, God, I've done everything that you told me to do. Right now, show yourself. Let the people know that you are God. He did not even finish prayer and fire came from heaven, consumed the water, consumed the wood, consumed the sacrifice, consumed the stones. Everything was so consumed that there was no doubt that he's God, but there was no doubt of his power and that, and that there is no God like him. The whole of Israel bowed down and said, the Lord he is God. The Lord hmm, is God. I think nowadays we live a life that sometimes we wonder whether really God is Lord and dominant in every area of our life. But when you begin to see the way God behaves among some people who have been with the Lord, He's always trying to prove without a shadow of a doubt, not the people among the people that have accepted him as God. Because you see, in Israel, there were people who were worshipping Baal. They were idolaters. But when God proved himself, every one of them, whether they were worshipping idols or anything, every one of them bowed their feet, bowed their knees and said, God is God. The Lord is God. The Lord is God. I will give you another example. We see Goliath threatening the army of Israel and cursing them with his gods for 40 days. He traumatized them. They were an emotional wreck. Because this man would show up every morning and insult their God, insult their kid, insult everybody and blaspheme. Did that for 40 days. Nobody could say anything. Everybody was, even King Saul, the tallest among them was hiding. Everybody was afraid. And David showed up. David heard what Goliath is saying. Then David was stirred up and said, how dare this uncircumcised Philistine talk about my God like that? I will kill him. I will kill him so that everybody will know that the God Almighty is the Lord. Listen to what David said. The reason why I'm going to fight this fight because I want to prove that the idols of Philistine, the gods behind Goliath, his, his, his own strength cannot compare to God. So I will kill him. And so he told the people and everybody was scared. Oh my God, David, you cannot. This one is a champion from his youth. This guy is an excellent warrior. Nobody has defeated him. He believes in himself. This guy is a conqueror, a valiant conqueror. David said, listen, you don't understand. I'm going to kill this guy. And even when David was approaching him, they tried to give David weapons to protect him. David said, I don't need protection. Take those garments out of me, those warrior garments. That were, I don't need protection because if God can protect me and, and secure me and let me kill this guy, that is not God. I'm going to put myself in a position. I'll kill him. I'll cut off his head. And when Goliath saw David do that, approach him, said, how can you send somebody like this boy, uh, this boy with stones to come and fight me? And he began to blaspheme again and, and begin to insult David, despise him, look down on him. Because David had no sword, David had no weapons, David had only sling and a stone with no protection on his body. Because he believed this God. Sometimes I really believe that God makes it so impossible, so difficult, so, I mean, overwhelming, so that he can prove to everybody that there's no shadiness yet, there's no fraudulent activities yet, there's nothing going on that can decide whether God can do it. And David said to Goliath, you come to me with all the shells and weapons and your idols, but I come to you in the name of the Lord. I will cut off your head and feed your body to the best so that everyone will know for you here, right here, that God is God. And he did exactly that. He literally killed the Goliath with a stone, took his own sword and cut off his head. He approached this fight with no sword. I told Goliath, I will cut off your head. What, what am I trying to let you understand? 
I think we have belittled God so much because there's something seriously wrong with the way we are doing things as Christians. We are not prevalent and we have not allowed God to be exalted among the heathen and the nations. So they disrespect us. They look down on us. Why? Because we don't really know the God that we serve. We think we know and today we are going to address that in the same manner there was a time that paul was traveling to rome because he was going to stand trial in rome and he by prophetic means knew that there was going to be danger danger on the road uh, on the sail he told the captain and they didn't listen to him and so they traveled on the sea and they were they get to a time they were threatened i mean they were the ship was attacked and they were sinking they were in jeopardy they didn't know what to do uh, on the verge of losing their life after saw uh, paul had had an encounter with the angel stood the next day took bread in the midst of the storms oh my god storms broke the bread and started eating and then gave the bread to everybody and said to them an angel of the Lord, whom I serve, is standing by me. And he has told me that we are not going to die. Every one of you, because you are even hanging around me, none of you will lose even a string of your hair. Think about it. Their hair will not, they will not even lose a string of their hair. Just because some of them are with porn. Even if you are growing bored, for that season you can't lose a hair because Paul said it. Listen to this. And then Paul said to them that, but this one is going to happen. The ship is going to be wrecked. We are going to find ourselves on an island, but we nobody is going to die. And the next day, and he told them, guys, eat and, and, and be okay, be, be strengthened because nobody is going to die. Now, it happened exactly like Paul said it. The ship was wrecked. Every one of them say, I mean, swam into an island and they were all saved. God had control over the sea, had control over the storm, had control of everything to the extent that everybody in the ship now know that Paul is a servant of a God who rules over everything on this earth. What am I saying to you today? What I'm trying to let you understand is if your Christianity does not elevate your God, we know we know we nobody even trying to question the validity of his power and does not put you in the position for God to be exalted. There's something wrong. There's something wrong. Because the reason why God is here is because he wants to be God. He wants to be able to elevate his people above everything. So if you read the text that I read, it says, Be still and know. Be still and you will know that I am God. Then he begins to explain how he wants to be God. I will be exalted among the heathen. The heathen are people who don't serve God, who don't have no respect for him. They don't know God at all. They have not even heard the message. They don't care about religion. They don't come to church. These are not people that you give trust. They don't, they don't know anything. God is saying that. If you can do your part, our God will show up to the hidden. And not only that, I will be exalted in there. So two things is going to happen. God is saying, for me to be exalted, I am going to be an invisible God but for me to be exalted, I need you, the people, to be exalted. And for me to exalt, for me to exalt myself, I will elevate you among people who don't even receive God, who are rebellious, who are rejected, who are sinners, who are demon, demonic, witchcraft, wizard, occult powers. God is saying the hidden who don't know Him, I will exalt you so that I can exalt myself. And I'm going to do it not with your contribution. I don't need you. I, the only thing I'm going to do, I will set up the scenario. I will set up the orchestration. I will set up the manifestation. The only thing I need you to do is to remember that I am the one who's going to do it. I will be exalted 
I'll be lifted up. I'll be enthroned. My kingdom shall be established. What we're talking about kingdom is not a message. It's not philosophy. It's not you uh, ritual. I'm talking about uh, divinely orchestrated scenarios that shows an authentic proof that God is alive and nobody can shake it off. Nobody, nobody can compete. Nobody can question the validity of his presence. So when we talk about church and things we do in our worship, it's a joke. Well, the things we've been coming to church and, and we listen to messages, it's a joke. Listen, uh, we are playing games because whilst we are busy trying to do things in the building, God is busy trying to say, listen, I want to take over the nations. I want to take over the occultic meeting that you've been doing in your territory. I want to take over uh, the cities. I want to take over your families, all the witches and the wizards. I don't care who they are. God says I will be exalted. And I will be exalted among the earth. That means the element of creation will also bow to you when you now function in that dimension. God is saying, I will do things that will prove that I'm exalted in you. That is why somebody like Joshua, he was fighting his own fight, fighting for God. And it was getting dark. And Joshua looked at the sun, the sun, sun still in Gabua. I want you to stand still in this city and moon. Stand here. Don't don't go. Stay right here. So what, what Joshua did was he kept one area sunny and he kept another another area dark. And he went on for the whole day without prayer. He didn't pray. He just spoke. Son, don't move. Keep on shining your light over here in this city. And then keep on moving. Don't move. I want you to be dark in this city. Let me finish my fight. Because if you if you change position, I will uh, these people will run. So now what do you think is going to happen to those people who were being chased by Joshua? Who knew that at this time it's supposed to be dark, but it's not getting dark. Just because a common human being has spoken to the elements of creation. And said the sun stands still. Move, don't move because I'm fighting. And this Joshua is in the Old Testament. So what am I saying? What I'm saying to you is this. God is saying, be still and you will know. What will you know? What, what, what does he want you to know? God says, be still and know that I am God. When God says, I want you to know that I'm God, he's not talking about theology. He's not talking about scriptures. It is, he's not talking about the good preaching of your pastor, Pastor Manti. He's not preaching, he's not talking about the small little prophecies you've been receiving. He's really, see, we have belittled the standard so much that we have embraced an error. He's not talking about the, uh, the revelation that you scream and shout, that small little penny revelation that you think we have got. The one person man will teach you, you get excited about. No, 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 no. When God says, I want to show you that I'm God, then he begins to explain how he wants to do it. I'll be exalted among the hidden. That means, if you are from a family, and the witches, the wizards, and everybody in the family are exalted, and you say you know your God, it shows that you don't know God yet. Because if you really, truly know God, according to the, can, the standard of God himself, the way he wants to be known, God himself will visit all the witches and the wizards in your family one by one and, br and bring them down, suppress them, whatever he's going to take, to show them that he is God and to prove to you without no shadow of doubt that he is God. He will have to do something that only God can do to prove to you the person who says you know God. God will make sure that he elevates you irrespective of the hidden, their money, their power, their dark powers. I don't care who they are. The God that we are serving is so omnipotent that when he says he's elevating, who can stop him? If God be for you, who then can be against him? If this same God that we say we know biblically, we know him experientially, I think things that will have changed. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, <laughs> I know what I'm talking about. I know what I'm talking about. What am I saying this to you? Last week, this I've not been shared with nobody yet. I was, somebody called me 
and I was sharing the word of God with him. I mean, I was just talking, you know me, anybody who calls me, they know me. I, I, I go on a tangent and I begin to talk about God. That's the only thing I can do. I talk, talk, talk. And whilst I was talking, this scripture that I'm preaching came out of my mouth. And then when the scripture came out of my mouth, and then the Holy Ghost now began to go deep in it and go deep in it. And, and I didn't even have no revelation. It's not something I wanted to teach it. Now, please hear me. As I was beginning to teach it and then speak revelations on it, and then begin to, then I heard me say this God Almighty, if you are truly God, if you are truly God, and you, I, I need you to prove yourself that you are so real. That anything in my life that is exalted, that diminish your knowledge, your experiential knowledge in my life, take off it right now. And I will continue to speak. Whilst I was speaking, the person I was speaking to, later told me, Pastor Manchu, whilst you were speaking, I saw an angel come and stand behind you. And I saw the angel with a sword, a flaming sword, and I saw the flaming sword stretch on you and i saw things coming out of your body and coming out of your body and entering into the sword and then the vision left then he said to me pastor manti i think that your body was something was wrong with your body you were sick something was going on in your body do you know for a long time now i feel so weak so tired I, I don't know what is happening to me i've tried everything feel so weak so tired since that day since that day that the angel of the Lord visited me. My body has completely changed. The weakness, the tiredness, everything is gone. What I, God wanted to prove to me, please hear me. Today I'm not preaching a message. I just want to talk to you. That the kind of Christianity that we think we believe in, we are denying God the ability to manifest himself in the real world. People are afraid of juju, are afraid of dark powers. They are not afraid of God. But I prophesy and decree, we are entering into a season that you have to be very careful. That when the Bible says, touch not my anointed, it's very true. You mess around, you will die instantly. Something is going to happen. Even bigger and greater than when Peter and John uh, began to speak. Somebody lied to an apostle and then died on the spot. Something is about the glory of God. It's about to manifest in the real world to the standard they will beg earth to rule over them i'm telling you now we we see that god is saying listen to the text again be still and know that i am god be still and you will know how do you know god god says i want to be known not by theology not by information not by how many hours you pray your rituals I want to be known by the demonstration of my power that will elevate you above anybody, anything that is not connected to me. That means in your family, you need to rule. And today I am going to tell you that God is going to release you from every satanic sabotage. Anything that has belittled you, suppress your destiny and greatness. Any oracle and decree in your families, that has literally suppressed suppress your glory. Any power, which is wizard, any diabolical agenda that has obstructed your life, today they are falling in the name of Jesus. Today do I pronounce and decree. Your appearing has come. Your manifestation has come. Because it shall not be by might or by power. It shall be by the Spirit. Now please hear me. The Bible says, be still and you will know. So there is a knowledge that is only available. This knowledge is not information. It's divine demonstration. It is a proof that will elevate you above every circumstance to authenticate the divinity, the sovereignty of our God. So therefore, when you know how to operate like that, God is saying that leave the proof of my divinity to me. I will prove myself to you by suppressing everything that is hindering you from being elevated. I will go against your enemies. 
I will go against circumstances. I will go against every impediment. I will go against everything that is putting you down. And I will elevate you to the extent that everybody will know. Everybody. I'm not talking to somebody. Everybody. Come on. Lift up your hands wherever you are. Say, God, I want this. I am not going to live today until I get it. I want this thing right now. Do you know the Bible says God spoke to Moses and said, Moses, I will make you a God to Pharaoh. I'll make you a God. <laughs> I, will, I will make you a God to understand the whole empire of Egypt will bow and know that I am God. There came a time that Pharaoh was begging Moses, said, please take your people and get out of this place. Quickly, please get out of the place before we all die. How did it happen? Moses had a secret. And that is what I'm about to share with you today. He says, be still. And you will know. And so if we are not knowing God on that level, and we only know him by going to church, and you only know him by preaching, and you only know him by information, and you only know him by what, and, and that kind of stuff that you think you know, you really don't know God. We all don't know God. God is saying that I want to be known by the demonstration of my power. When I was born, my mother told me a story. Instead of my mother carrying me for nine months, she carried me almost about 12 months. Nearly died. Didn't know what to do. And by God's grace, she gave, she gave back to me. Now listen, I was born 7 a.m., 7 o'clock, uh, 7 a.m., 7th of October, 1970. My, all my numbers are seven. Please hear me. But when I, they gave back to me that same week, I was so sick, nearly on the point of death. Now, before my mother gave birth to me, she had a visitation from Jesus and told him that he's going to have a son. The son is going to be a man of God. And so my mother told me all this, even when I was a kid. Please hear me, I'm coming to say something. That week that I was supposed to die because I was at the point of death, no, nothing could help. That very night, the, the Lord visited all the witches in the village who were trying to kill me. And they all began to come out and began to confess. They were hit by an invisible power that every one of them began to confess and began to. That is the day that I was okay. Immediately I was freed. What am I saying to you? There is a realm in God that when you step into, God takes your very existence personal. That you don't try to promote yourself. You don't try to elevate yourself. You don't try to fight for yourself. You don't try anything because God is saying, be still. And you will know. I want to God says, I want to prove my divinity, my sovereignty. That I can do all things for you. But the only way you can get that done is to be still. And then you will know. And so there is a knowledge... That is uniquely for those who are still. Be still. And there's another knowledge that is book knowledge, scriptural knowledge, preaching knowledge, religious knowledge, the knowledge that we try to work in out to know God by ourselves. And God is saying that I have no, I don't have to authenticate myself. But those who are still and they know, God says, I will exalt myself among the hidden. Those who don't know me. If your boss doesn't know God, get ready because you're about to be promoted above him. I'm telling you, if the area you dwell in, you don't have the best in that city, there's something wrong. And I'm, I'm beginning to, I mean, can you believe? I was just sharing this scripture. It came by revelation. I, I was just talking to somebody and this scripture just came to me. And I, I started talking and the Holy Ghost was giving me revelation on it. And instantly an angel was sent to come and heal me. An angel. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm walking around today looking at my body. My God, I feel different. I feel, oh my God, for months I've been going through weakness and tired. I don't know what is going on. The angel, <laughs> just because I was talking about this scripture. I don't know what God is going to do for you today. I, I waited for him. I told him that, Lord, I'm not here to come and preach. I just want to share. And I, as I'm sharing, begin to activate miracles for everybody that is hearing me today. Deploy your angels. Prove to them that of a surety you are God. And so I prophesy and I decree the complicated problems you'll never be able to solve for 20 years will be solved today. I decree that the sickness on your body, 
that you have suffered for years today it is leaving your body right now i prophesy and i command the poverty and lack that the enemy has literally entangled with you and shackled you with today you are stepping out of it i prophesy and i decree that the generation curses that has controlled your father's house and your mother's house today every one of the thrones is being suppressed the altar is cracking with thunder and lightning. Angels are striking the demons to elevate you. Whoever, whose glory was buried. Any, any wealth of yours that was taken, stolen and taken from you. Today I prophesy and decree because of you. Your life is restored. Your family is restored. I prophesy and decree. Anyone that they put a sentence of death. They, they put a limitation of your age. And literally stole your time. I command your times are redeemed. I command your years are restored. I command and I decree. If you believe, lift up your hands and just say hallelujah. Lift up your hands and say hallelujah because we are jubilated as the angels of God are doing warfare for you right now. Lift up your hands. The Bible says that behold him. Know that he is God. Come on, lift up your hands and say, hallelujah, hallelujah. I am not stopping until you say it. Because the angels of God are marching on your behalf. They are ministering to you right now. Because they want the name of the Lord to be exalted. He is exalted among the hidden. He is exalted, he is exalted, he is exalted. Come on, lift up your voice and begin to exalt the name of the Lord. Come on, say hallelujah. Say hallelujah, say hallelujah, say hallelujah. I am not stopping until, I won't continue until you say, come on, lift up your voice and lift up your hands and, and begin to praise God like you've lost your mind. As you are doing that, God is lifting you up out of obscurity. What they said will not happen, will happen good for you. What they sentenced, what they said, they are shutting it down. It's about to go forward. Your business is going to grow. It's going to take over the nations. Your ministry is going to grow. It's going to take over the nations. You you have made this, your family is restored. Lift up your hands. Come and lift up your voice wherever you are. Lift up your voice. Lift up your hands. He is exalted. God is exalted among the hidden. Anything that is among the powers of darkness that is holding you back. Any hidden agenda, any idolatry power that has suppressed your greatness, your destiny, buried your light. Today you are literally coming out of it. I command you to come out of that prison door. I command you to be on earth. I command your treasures to be released. I command your glory to be released. I command your favor to be released. I command everything God said about you to be established. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says, Be still, and you will know. So God is saying, We need to do our part. Be still. And that the knowledge of God, which is the supernatural, the miraculous, that will elevate and exalt you to authenticate and to prove to God, to you, yourself, that he is God. And to, to suppress the hidden, the darkness, the powers, anything in your life that was already exalted, about, uh, exalted in your life and suppress you. Because God wants to prove that he is God, he has to liberate you from any subsidiancy. And elevate you to be king. And exalt you to be king. Because it is through you that God can prove to the nations that he is God. So when we are talking about kingdom authority, it is not just a, a rhetoric and theology, no. We are talking about something that God wants to do to make you rule over the earth. Reign over the earth. What am I saying? If you are going through areas of your life that things are controlling you, suppressing you, you are not happy. Your destiny is literally entangled in obscurity. Your light is dim. Things are suppressing. Your financial challenge is suppressed. You don't know what to do. I am here with a message for you. You are the one I'm looking for. Those of you that has, have not been exalted yet, you don't know where to turn. You don't know what to do. 
You are so overwhelmed emotionally, financially, you are challenged. You don't know what to do. I am looking for people that your condition is so worse that nobody can fix it but only God. God says, I should come and tell you. If only you will be still, he will prove to you that he's God. And how is he going to prove that he's God? He will elevate you among the hidden and elevate you over the work of his hands. He will elevate you among every demonic, every dark power, any spirit, any circumstance that is hidden, deficient, that is deficient of God, that is hidden. Anything that is hidden, that is not of God. God says, I will elevate you. I will exalt you among the hidden. And I will exalt you above the elements of this earth. That means the suppression that has hindered and obstructed people in your family for years. Through you, you are going to stop it. I'm not talking to people who God wants to enthrone and power. God wants to put rulership over you. God wants you to reign. God says that when you are still, when you are still, I will make you rule over this earth. I will make you. <laughs> to prove to every, to prove to you you who had nothing struggling and didn't know what to do have no solution don't know what to do he says i will prove to you that i'm god by exalting you to prove to the hidden that i'm god too by exalting you oh hallelujah hmm. he picked a shepherd boy who has been rejected by his father and family, ostracized at the backside of the desert, looking after few sheep, at the treachery of the forest, being attacked by lions and bears. Nobody had any hope for him. When God was looking for a king to be anointed, they didn't even call him. And God, to prove to the whole of Israel, to prove to David himself, the David who wrote this text, to prove to him that God is God. God told you, I'll make you a king. I don't need permission from your father, your mama, everybody, nobody. I don't need permission from anybody. I'll make you a king. And, and it looked impossible. Because he was not from a bloodline. He didn't know what... I mean, how God literally took him through the process. From homelessness, from hunger, sleeping in the forest, being chased by Saul, went through everything. Everybody thought it was fun. He got to a time, even his own soldiers wanted to stone him. He didn't know what to do. He went through everything. It looked like the possibility of that prophecy would not come to pass. By the end of the world, we saw God elevate David to be king. And everybody around him who knew him, where he came from will know for sure that it is only God who can do this. David himself knows that if he had not been the Lord, hmm, where will he be? Look at somebody like Joseph. Joseph was prophet, gave a dream. God gave him a dream. All your father, your family will bow before you. And then they sold him out. He went through Potiphar's uh, house, convicted of attempted rape, uh, 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 rape and put in prison for life. He's still in prison, working hard, expecting God to bring his family, who don't know where he is in another family, in, a, in another nation, in the prison. Believing God, that God can do the impossible to bring him out of prison. Elevate him to get his brothers, his sisters, brothers and, and father to come and bow before. This guy is in prison. And he still has a secret. That if I can be still, God will have to prove himself to me that he is God. By doing the impossible, the doing the improbable, what nobody thinks is possible, God will have to move the nations, shift kings, huh? align circumstance that is not possible. How is he going to release me from prison? My family don't even know their place. They think I am dead. How is it going to be? And God did it. Gave him a whole nation and God his family to come and bow before him. What am I trying to let you understand? If you knew how God wants to prove himself to be God over your life, some of you, you will not even sleep with joy because it is overwhelming. God has a master plan. The problem is you are not in position. It says be still. 
So now let's go further and ask ourselves. When God said be still, what does it mean? Because we know first we think we know we don't. When God says be still so that you will know. Therefore, God is saying that if I am not known in your life on the dimension of the supernatural, the dimension of divine acts, that dimension of exploits, that will prove to you that there is nothing impossible to you. That I will do whatever it takes to elevate you from obscurity, from limitation, from satanic strongholds. Because I want to prove to you that I am God. And many of us, because we have not done our part, yes, you go to church, but you are not still. Yes, you pray, but you are not still. Yes, you give, but you are not still. Yes, you do all these things because nobody taught you that be still is not just you be sitting down and doing nothing. He says, be still, then you will know. So therefore, if we are not knowing that our stillness is wrong, something is wrong. Because God is not the son of man that he should lie. He spoken it, he will do it. The problem is, if we are not doing our part, well, how do we expect him to do his part? He says, you know, be still. Even if you are suppressed, be still. You don't have no money, be still. You don't know how to fulfill your, uh, your divine promise, uh, prophecy, be still. Whatever is limiting you, suppressing you, Putting you in a subsidiary state. The witches are controlling your life. The wizards are using occultism. The politicians are controlling them. God said that if you be still, I will come in. And I will elevate you because I want to prove myself to you that I'm God. And I will go after those people who are ruling and controlling and, and suppressing. I will go against them and deal with them. And I will lift you above them so that they will also know that I'm God. The problem is the church. We don't know what we are talking about. We are preaching messages, we go home. And many of you, you are so lazy to be still, but you are busy nine to five. You are the, the most valuable time of your daily life. It's not you waking up and be on the phone on social media, running around and busy, 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 busy which is not doing that. And you are trying so hard to do things for yourself that God can do easily for you. Trying so hard. And so when we say be still, what does it mean? Because if everything that is suppressing me, hindering me, obstructing me, stealing from me, anything that is putting me down so that I can't be what God wants to, me to be, is in hidden in the be still, then I need to find out. If I find that out, oh my God, then I will do it like never before because then I know that God will have to prove himself to me. By power demonstration, by the supernatural, by the miraculous. I mean, as I said, I was just sharing this word with somebody and instantly God healed me. <laughs> I've not even told anybody yet. God just touched my body. I mean, the man of, uh, the person I was talking to didn't even know that I was feeling weakness in my body. He said, Pastor Mata, I don't understand. As you were talking, I saw an angel come and stand behind you. I saw him with a flaming sword. And I saw him stretch the flaming sword on your body. And I saw things coming out of your body and entering into the sword. And the Lord is telling me that he's healed you. You were sick. Something wrong with your body. And God has touched you. And from that day, my body is now functioning in the way I am even surprised. For months, I've struggled, prayed. He goes and then comes. And I don't even know what is going on. And this is not, he has nothing, I go do my medical checkup, there's nothing wrong. What am I trying to let you understand? If that very thing was suppressing me from elevation to do what God has called me to do, then God will have to prove himself. Because whilst I was talking and sharing the word, I said this. I said, God, anything in my life, come on, please, you repeat this after me. Say, Lord God Almighty, anything in my life that is suppressing my exhortation, that is hindering me from knowing you the way I'm supposed to know you, take it away from me right now. Say it again. Say, Lord God Almighty, anything in my life that is hindering me, obstructing me from knowing you the way I'm supposed to know you as the God Almighty, that has put me down, stolen from me, hindered me, put me down. Today, elevate me now. 
and prove to me that you are God. Whether it's sickness, deal with it. Poverty, deal with it. Relationship, deal with it. Whatever it is, may angels be released now. And say it from your heart. I'm telling you, you are going to begin to see miracles that will blow your mind. So, Pastor, what does it mean to be still? When you look at the word be still, it is not everybody that can enter into that stillness until you are being. Therefore, the Lord created some beings, made some beings, only those who only those beings can enter into the stillness. Those beings are opposite to the hidden. The hidden don't know God. So God is saying the beings can only enter into the stillness. If you are not part of those beings, you cannot enter into the stillness. Now, who are the beings? These are people who have a relationship with God. They have a connection with God. That is why God is speaking to them, not to the everybody. And so they have a potential. Only them can be able to enter into that stillness. That is why Jesus, when he met Nicodemus, he says, except ye be born again, you cannot enter into the kingdom. So when we talk about the stillness, there is a place in God that is an incubation. A place that you need to be a unique, special being for you to be able to enter that place where you have an intimate connection with God, a unity with God, a place where you are fused with God. So you enter in as a being, but you come out as one with God. So that when God is exalted, you are also exalted together with him. Are you getting what I'm talking about? So God is saying that be what? Be still. And so the stillness is a state that the being enters in to be fused with God to become one. That is the place of intercourse, spiritual intercourse. That is the place of knowledge, union. A man knows a woman. That is the place that God says, when you enter in, I become one with you. And the more you become one with me in that state, I will come out of it with you, and I'm one with you to the extent that I will be exalted. So when I'm exalted, you are also exalted. What is that place? When you say be still, it doesn't mean that you just sit still and you are quiet. And then therefore, because of that, God, no, 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 that is not it. That is the, <laughs> that is the deception that has affected the whole church. It is not you, okay, everybody be quiet. And we will, no, no, no. So what does it mean? Jesus said in this way, except you be born again, you cannot enter. So number one, you must be born a human being, born again, number two. And then be baptized with the Spirit, number three. When you are on that level, now you can now enter into that realm. Now, it is not God who puts you into that. It says, be still. The place of sternness, incubation, is a place where you enter and you surrender your effort. And you yield your activity. We call it the place of rest in another place. It is the place where you see from your own activity. It doesn't mean that you don't do anything. It means that when you enter that place, God takes over. And so it is a place where the presence of God is tangibly manifested. And when you enter to that place, you sit still and relax. And let God now begin to fashion and unite with you because what he does with you in the closet, God himself will come out and announce on the housetop. Some of you want God to announce your prophecy, your exhortation on the housetop, but you don't have any intimacy with him in the closet. The Bible says, those who know their God shall be strong and they shall do exploits. So what are you saying, Pastor Bantu? What I'm saying is, if you are born again, and you are baptized with the spirit you have the right to enter into the place called stillness that is the closet that is the intimate place of god 
that is what we call the rest of God. That is what we call the kingdom of God. That is what we call the spirit of God. It is the place where the presence of God dwells. You step in there. That is what we call the dwelling place of God. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of him, is my. You see, when you get there, God takes over and begins. He's my refuge, my fortress. In whom do I trust? A thousand shall fall my life. Ten thousand of my. Life. All those things are by product because. You have a life in the closet. Many of you don't know this. So because of that, you unnecessarily try to demonstrate power that is not there. You are struggling in vain. I don't try to struggle with the move of the spirit. I am a career of the move. I, I change atmosphere not because I, I'm trying to work. No, because I am someone who knows how to dwell in his presence. This morning I woke up. And went to his presence and stayed there. And when I get into his presence, I'm not talking too much. I'm not trying to say a whole lot of stuff. I just, now, this is how you do it. Because you are born again, baptized in the spirit, you have the right to enter into the presence. Number two, you have to understand that being has significance and relevance only in the present. So if you say you are born again and baptized in the spirit, and you don't continually by yourself, Go into the presence of God and wait. Then the relevance of your born again, your Christianity is useless. It is only those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. What I'm trying to let you understand, the Christianity we are living right now is a fluke. It is a fraud. It is it's not appropriate. We are looking religious, we are looking spiritual, we are being fed scriptural information, it's doing us no good. That is why we are so subservient and everything is elevated and exalted above and above. The Bible says, be still, and you will know. God himself is taking on the responsibility to prove his divinity to you. How is he going to do it? You will know that he's God. How is he going to prove that he's God? He says, I will be exalted. I will be exalted among the heathen. Those who don't know me, those who are uh, demonic, oppressive, whatever they are, I will be exalted. How is he going to exalt himself? He will exalt you to prove to you that he's God. And as he exalts you among the heathen, they will know also that it is only God who can do that. And he will exalt himself in the end. The elements of creation will listen to you. If we are not moving in kingdom authority and ruling the earth as kings, then everything we do as Christians in the church is a fraud. God, Jesus did not come to die for us to be churchgoers. He says, repent for the kingdom. He didn't say repent for the church. Repent for the kingdom of God. Is that he wants his people to come to the place of rulership that we reign here on earth and move in the supernatural. What I'm trying to let you understand that we have not been told the whole truth. And so we go to church and we come back home and we got little small little prophecies and, and we're trying to get breakthrough. No. If you stay in the presence of God, God himself will go out and orchestrate miracles, signs and wonders. That's what Jesus did. Jesus says every morning at 3 o'clock. How many of you know that? Every morning the Son of God will wake up, get out of the house, go to the forest, and then three of God spend time with God to have a six. Spend time with the Lord. Before he comes out, everything that is supposed to be happening that day, God has orchestrated circumstances to get his son to rule over it. So he doesn't care what happens. Because whilst he was in the presence of God and spending time with him, God was working miracles and setting things in motion, deploring angels, setting circumstances. Everything that would come before the Lord was already death wet within that three hours that he was waiting for God, the Father. Are you all listening to me? Every business, every if he has to raise the dead, whatever is going to happen, he was fully equipped in the closet. That is why when Jesus was going to the cross and the disciples were, he says, can't you wait with me for an hour? For the flesh is weak. The spirit is willing. Wait so that you do not enter into temptation. The Lord knew the temptation that was coming. He wanted to program them whilst they wait with him. So that as they wait with them, by the time the temptation comes, God has wired them so much that the temptation has no power over them. 
and the satanic influence maneuver attack demonic agenda the traps the limitation the deficiency whatever it is god is saying that i've already prepared you put you together it will come but you will not enter into it will not have control over you you will rule over it because whilst you waited god is fixing you the reason why many people in the church can't change they told you to don't fornicate don't lie don't cheat don't be angry all those things you can't do it if you don't wait see the preacher's assignment is to let you know that he the preacher cannot help you and you yourself you can't help yourself the only thing the preacher can do is to point you to jesus and let you know that the the, the responsible thing you have to do is to go to the closet yourself and go and wait and the preacher that tells you any other way is lying to you because i don't care what they prophesy to you i don't care how many uh, whatever they say to you you can be a satire by the preacher and the revelation if you yourself don't go spend time with the lord you won't get everything god has said about you i'm closing what is the stillness the stillness is the lances God has given to the born again baptized in the spirit believer to come and sit with him daily daily are you all listening to me somebody's phone is making noises God wants you to come and sit with him daily and when you come and sit with him this is what you do when you come and you sit in his presence what happens is the stillness only starts when the presence has manifested. Let me say it again. You cannot wait upon the Lord until the Lord first has appeared. And so it is not you trying to work it and to make it. You have to make sure the presence of the Lord is there before you start the waiting. So how do you get his presence? That means you call. That's what the Lord says when you pray, ask for the kingdom. The Father says he delights to give you the kingdom. The kingdom is the present. The, pre the, the kingdom is the incubation of God's presence that you enter in for you to be transformed. So you ask for the kingdom. The reason why many of you cannot ask for the kingdom, number one, nobody told you you can. Number two, some of you, you are not baptized in the spirit. You cannot have access to that realm until you are baptized in the spirit. That's why we are baptized in the spirit. So when you are baptized in the spirit, you have access to that realm. You can call the presence anytime you want, wherever you want, wherever you are, you can call the presence. Even if you are driving, you can call the presence and sit in the presence and enjoy the presence. And if you continue to do that, miracles and signs and wonders will be a byproduct. You don't struggle. It, it, it just happens. You begin to talk to somebody and then you begin to prophesy without even, I mean, it will be so easy for you. People will be wondering how you flow like that. And not only that, God himself will now begin to do things for you that he doesn't even tell you. People are going to begin to call you. I had a dream or that the Lord spoke to me to send you some money. Things will begin to happen. It will shock you what God is going to do. So God says, be still and you will know. There is a knowledge. That is a byproduct of your waiting. That is the knowledge. That is an attentive proof of your true relationship with God. If you want to know God, like a man knows a woman intimately, you need to wait upon him. The Bible says, those who know their God shall be strong. And they shall do exploits. The Bible says, they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. See, Christianity today is information. So you think, because you are intellectually stimulated, you know God. The devil wants to deceive you with that mindset, so he can keep you bound. But the true knowledge of God through intimacy, when you are fused with him and you become one with him, immediately you are liberated and exalted to the standard anything that was suppressing, hindering you, generation curses, geographical demons, power that is holding you back. When you enter into that realm, immediately you are liberated and exalted. That no demon can put a stop to what God is saying because God wants to prove to you that the benefit of your intimacy is that elevation. So he said, be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the hidden. Anything that is devoid of God should not rule you. Let me say it again. Anything that is devoid of God Almighty shall not control your life. Lift up your hands wherever you say anything 
that is not of God cannot rule my life. Come on, lift up your right hand and say it. Say anything right now. In the mighty name of Jesus. Anything, whether it be demons, whether it be money, whether it be sickness, whatever it is, anything that is devoid of God cannot rule over my life. Now, in the name of Jesus. Why? Because God says he will be exalted. He will exalt himself among the hidden. The hidden are people who don't know God. People who are not serving God. People who have no covenant relationship with God. Who don't want nothing to do with God. So God will, God will exalt you above the witches, the wizards. God will exalt you about the geographical uh, demons, the economic upheaval, the political system, whatever it is, as long as it is devoid of God. Get ready, get ready, get ready, because you are being exalted, you are being enthroned. Oh, I am here to get you to be enthroned by the power of God. How many of you want to receive your crowns today? How many of you are ready to receive the enthronement of God? Come on, lift up your hands. Father, I'm ready. I am ready. I'm ready. Come on, lift up your hands and say, I am ready now. I am taking my crown. I am taking rulership. I am stepping in right now in the name of Jesus. I'm closing. <laughs> this is my second close. <laughs> what am I saying to you? It's time. God never wants Christianity. That is ethical, religious, and still in bondage. God doesn't want that. God wants you to change. He wants you to experience a dimension of the supernatural that blows your mind. So what are we going to do? We have to now block the time and learn how to wait upon the Lord. For they that wait upon the Lord, they shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as they come. They shall run and not be weary. God says, I want to prove myself by doing the impossible thing, by elevating you and promoting you, that nobody can stop you. I don't care how many they are, where they are coming from. I don't care whether they are demons in the sea, under the sea, in the air. I don't care who they are. When God says he's exalting you, who can stop him? Today, I want you to know from the text, be still. Because God wants you and throne you. Be still and know that he's God. He shall be exalted in the nations. He shall be exalted among the hidden. He shall be exalted among the uh, in the earth. That means God say, I will elevate you among the people. And I will elevate you in the elements of my creation. I want to make you a king. I want you to rule in my kingdom. I want you to operate in that dimension of the supernatural and I will do it for you. You don't have to wonder how it's going to be done. God says, I will do it for you. So if you are losing your mind, your relationship is suppressing you. You are struggling financially. You are getting attacked on your body. You don't know what to do. I'm talking to you today. God says, be still and know that he's God. I hope you got it today. If you have been blank, can you say amen and amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift up your voice and thank God for the message. If you're on Facebook, you can write on the Facebook and say, Pastor, I got it. I want everybody to block time every day in the morning, in the evening, that you go and spend time with the Lord. You, you enter into the place of worship. If you don't have no worship, don't worry. You just enter. You sit down. If you are born again, baptized in the spirit, you are ready for that. And then so you say, just repeat this. Just say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus, I ask you for your kingdom. I, I say, Father, I ask you for your kingdom and for your prayer. I call your presence right now. Now, the moment you say that, God has already released the spirit, but the spirit will not come upon you until you allow him. The Bible says, uh, uh, the Bible says he stands at the door, he's knocking. Some people think that that is only for when you are born again once. No, it happens all the time. You have to refresh your baptism. So, so you ask the Lord, you command your body to open up. Your, your body is a door, it's the gate. The Bible says, uh, uh, as I open ye gates, you everlasting gate, open up. Let the king of glory come in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord is his name. So your body is a gate. It's an eternal gate for the presence of God. Your body is a temple of God. And so you need to command it to open. So you speak to your body. It's a mind, heart, body. Open up. Let the Spirit of God come in. Now when he comes, you will feel him. God doesn't come without sensation. You will feel him. 
either wind or power or open you, so he will give you an evidence of his presence. That when you have that evidence of his presence, now you sit and you are still. Whether you want to lie down, but be still. Don't shout, don't scream. Then what you do is you now sit still, relax, and observe how he moves on your body. Because the power of God will begin to move on your body. You are going to sense a vibration, an energy, a fire, a wind, liquid. You're going to feel something in your And it's going to begin to move on your body. Now as he's moving, you can talk to him in your heart. Don't scream. Don't shout. If you want to pray in tongues, you can do that. But don't scream. Just relax. Enjoy the presence. Now, the waiting is even powerful than your prayer. So as you are waiting and you sit there, do that for a while, for an hour or two. Just relax as you do that you can do that with worship and as you are doing that what is going to happen is the presence of the Lord begins to work on your character he begins to work on your character he begins to affect change in your life he begins to affect transformations in every areas of your life you are going to begin to sense the power of God permeating everything in your life. Oh, no, no, no. The presence of the Lord begins to work on you in a very tangible, manifested way. What am I saying to you? God wants you to know this. He wants your life completely transformed. Can you hear me? The audio is bad. The audio is bad? Okay, let me fix it. Now I know how to fix it. Uh -huh. Okay, let me fix the audio. Is it okay now? Yes. yes okay, yes. good. So what am I saying to you? The presence of the Lord is about to do something supernatural with you. God is about to shock you with an, an incredible demonstration of His glory and His power in your life. Are you all listening to me? He wants you to experience it. He wants you to enjoy the presence of the Lord. He wants you to see the glory of God manifested. But you have to take the responsibility to go and wait for him. And if you do that, you're going to see a supernatural work of God that will blow your mind. All right. I know you have been blessed. If you've been blessed, can you say amen? Those of you on Facebook, God bless you. If you want to sow a seed, you can send your tithe, your money to randolphmante at gmail.com or randolphmante at gmail.com on Cash App. God bless you guys on Facebook. You can send me uh, your praise report if God did something for you. God bless you. Bye-bye on Facebook.